Hi everyone, Robert Peek here, the Spontaneous Dungeon Master. I want to do another noun-based preparation session debrief. So this was a session I had um, very recently. We had a lot of fun. It was a kind of uh, search and rescue mission, if you like. So that's the general theme. But I think this particular episode illustrates something really important and useful for Spontaneous Dungeon Masters. And that is, it raises the question, how much do you prepare in advance and how much do you make stuff up on the fly? Now, it's all made up, right? <laughs> if you're not aware of that, um, then yeah, it is. I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you. Uh, we're making all of this up all the time. The question is just when, literally, are you making this up? And, you know, there's one school of thought that says make it all up in advance. And if they don't go into that room with that creature at that time, that just, you know, that'll that'll never happen. If they never find the treasure, fine. If they, you know, whatever, that the world is set. It is set before the game happens. That's what's made up. And based on how they interact and explore uh, in that world, that's what does or doesn't get revealed. There's no take backs. There's no changes. There's no other option but prepping in advance. There's another school of thought, which is much more what happens in improvisational acting. You get a bunch of people on the stage and you say, here's maybe one thing to kind of spark you off, and then off you go. And literally everything you say, hi Tom, how's it going? That guy's name's Tom now, right? <laughs> you, you, um, whatever you say, whatever comes out of your mouth, whatever you start doing, that becomes reality. And then you build like blocks upon uh, those spontaneous moments of invention to create a kind of story. So to me, one of the most fun adventures uh, that I've run have fallen somewhere between the two. Yes, there are elements of, of stocking things, of preparing things, of knowing what exists in advance, definitely. But there are also elements and times when you can decide, you know what? I hadn't thought of that, but that's good. That's really good. That really works. That is now also true. So this is a great example of, of that circumstance. Um, let's talk about the noun-based preparation for it. So what exists? I'm a big fan of hags. So Nagatha the Green Hag, I get her name, Nagatha the Green Hag, is harvesting black dragon eggs in the mirror of dead men. And she kidnapped Lenora to, uh, to come help her with this. Lenora happens to be Mert the Moneylender's niece. So this is set in, set in Waterdeep. Backstory. A dwarf named Ulf was escorting Lenora. Uh, she was going from Waterdeep to Neverwinter, and she gets seasick, so she had to go by land. Um, he was distracted by lights in the mirror of dead men. He went out to investigate. Nagatha got kidnapped. Um, and um, Sorry, Lenora got kidnapped. Nagatha enchanted her to become her, her assistant. So, what's why would the characters be interested in this? Well, exploring the swamps, uh, rescuing a noble person, being ingratiated to Mert, uh, maybe they get to see a black dragon, so I've been sprinkling rumors about black dragons spotted over the mirror of dead men for a while. Um, possible rewards? Well, I decided Mert, being an ex-adventurer, knows what adventurers want. And gold, yeah, gold's good, but they like magic items. So he's going to offer them at the start either a potion of invisibility, healing, or water breathing, and another of the same type of potion at the end. And uh, so that's the first fun bit. There's no, there's no healers in this party, this particular party. So a lot of them chose the healing potion. Uh, but invisibility and water breathing are also pretty cool, particularly in the swamp. So um, other possible rewards. Nagatha has a small hoard of treasure. And you could possibly lay hands on a black dragon egg. The dangers we're going to present, well, Nagatha herself. Uh, Will-o'-wisps, those were the lights. Uh, dragons, and there are probably some traps. And swamp muck itself. So the swamp itself uh, became a character in this one. Clues about what's really going on here. Well, uh, black dragons have been spotted in the mirror. They're out looking for their eggs. Uh, there's going to be some clues as to how Lenora um, was absconded with, maybe. There's bits of clothing of her clothing snagged on branches. Uh, and there's a green mist all in the swamp, a sign of the hag's lair. So where do we start? Let's start at the swamp. Uh, it's a, it's a you know, several days journey, maybe five days journey outside of Waterdeep, something like that. But let's start at the swamp with Ulf. They're out looking over uh, this swamp. We give it a nice little description. And then flash back to Mert and have, have the conversation with Mert. Um, the party can ask him. They've agreed to do this mission. They can ask him questions, and they can choose what potion they want. Um, and off we go. So it's a three-act structure. There's Mert's mission. Then there's probably, uh, as they wait out to check out the, the forest, they're likely to encounter these will-o'-wisps. 
Um, act two, a black dragon. I want to drop a black dragon on them from overhead at some point. Um, act three, Nagatha's Lair and, and the Rescue. For Nagatha's Lair, I used a three-room dungeon. Uh, the entrance, there's going to be some kind of riddle. Uh, the setback is they discover uh, Lenora's enchanted. She doesn't know who she is. And the conflict is Nagatha's going to come in and she's going to fight them. Uh, not only herself, but she has enchanted furniture, right? A kind of... Um, Kind of Beauty and the Beast or uh, Cinderella all gone wrong, right? These anim inanimate objects attacking them. So what really happened? Well, a lot of that went to plan, actually. Uh, the characters, you know, kind of followed followed a lot of that to, to an extent. One of them negotiated for money instead of potions with Mert. Fine, that all worked out. Uh, they get into the swamp, and with a search-type mission, really, um, this is a lot about skill checks, and this is a lot about the party telling me what are your individual um, characters going to contribute to this to this search? How, how are you going to do this? How are you going to find them? So they're trying various different types of skill checks, um, and one of them um, rolls a really high roll uh, to investigate, uh, basically kind of trying to track. How do you track in a swamp? Well, so this was the first the first kind of thing. I go, well, what kind of clue would they encounter? And in this case, what I decided was because it's a swamp, uh, Negatha probably doesn't want to get her her toes wet, so she's probably using some kind of little flat boat. So there's marks above the waterline uh, on the tree bark uh, that indicate where the boat has bumped up against the trees as it's kind of bobbed its way through, and it makes a clear path. So now the characters see, okay, there's a pathway through here um, that, um, you know, that basically there's a trail we can follow. And one of them gets the idea, well, you know, if she needs a boat, we probably do too. Uh, maybe we should head back to the wagon. And while they're thinking of it, they're thinking about this dwarf, Dwarf Ulf. Now, Ulf was really ashamed uh, in the flashback with Mert about having lost uh, lost Lenora. He felt he looked particularly guilt-stricken, and that's how I played him. Um, so the, one of the party says, look, I, I want to know if there's something else going on with Mert. Could he potentially actually be in on this or be an adversary of some kind or be, be a problem for us? Ruled a very high, and they spent five days with them, right? So yeah, they're gonna they're gonna probably be pumping them for information if they can. Rolled a very high insight check, and at this point, I went, okay, this is this is too good to pass up. So Oath was intended to be a conduit, you know, just a way to get them there and get the adventure going. But what happened is, um, he, he, so he rolled he rolled a high insight, and there's something in. Um, the Solo Adventures toolbox, there's a mechanic where you kind of consult the Magic 8-Ball version of the DM, right? So if you rolled the high insight and you're playing a solo game um, and you go, well, I want to know if there's something else going on with this NPC, there's a system of yes, no, and maybe, which is kind of cool. So maybe means sort of, but not the way you think. And so in this case, I thought, you know, sort of, but not the way you think, actually. That's that's really good. Based on what they've known and seen so far, based on him acting really guilty and so forth, I think there is something up about Oof. So they go back, uh, they uh, interrogate him. The uh, half-orc mercenary is particularly effective uh, at drawing it out from him that, um, that actually um, he is incredibly ashamed. He didn't uh, leave her, and, and she was abducted. Uh, he saw her taken, taken by a green woman flying through the air, and then landing in a boat on the opposite side of the road in the swamp. And as she rode off, she was singing a little lullaby. Hadn't planned any of that. <laughs> Didn't know that was going to come up. But now the players know uh, that they're up against a hag. They know that they need a boat. They know that there is a way to find her. And and the and oof, you know, when they ask him why, you know, why didn't you tell us this sooner? You know, what's the deal? He looks up and you know he says, "I could never look my own kind in the eye again." And the, the half orc, of course, says, "You should be more worried about looking me in the eye." Right. So now um, he decides he's going with them to redeem himself. Uh, to Lenora, where there may be a subtext that he's actually in, in love with her. So uh, so they ask, look, is there any way to convert this wagon into a boat? 
Um, he, they, he happens to be able to do that for them. Uh, they're able to, uh, to take a long rest because previously they didn't actually encountered this black dragon on their way back. Uh, and as I said, the swamp is a character. If you stay too long under, under in the swamp water, it will begin to infect your lungs. You will have to make constitution saving throws. So they had already taken some damage between the will-o'-wisps and, and so forth. So it was a great opportunity to take a long rest, to convert the wagon into a boat and to set off on the mission. But this was a moment of maybe. This was a moment of maybe not, it, of, of really of yes, but not quite what you think. Um, and so I've often heard this called uh, the, the corollary to yes and. The corollary to yes and is no but. No but. So is it an adversary of ours? Is it someone that's in on the deal? No, but he's got something hidden and he knows something he's not telling. And uh, that can be a critical piece to help you on your search, help you find. They did find uh, the layer, an enormous um, giant snail shell that had been converted into a house. They solved the riddle at the entrance. They got, they snaked all the way into the back, encountered Lenore. The hag came in, they had a big battle. Um, she stepped through the wall. They blasted through the snail wall. Um, Ulf went down in the swamp and one of our new players got to, got to dive in and save him just at the last moment and place him into the boat, uh, defeat the hag. And, and kind of the final, the final part of act three is him looking up you know, at, at Lenora, who they'd saved, and saying, I won't fail you again, right? So Ulf's redemption actually became more or less the theme of that adventure, and that wasn't necessarily what was planned. So a synthesis here of, of uh, the noun-based preparation, which actually, lar largely what I'd prepared more or less went, went to plan, but this moment, this moment that, that um, I seized upon and I just decided, you know, this is too good, not to be at least partially true. And it turned out to be the guiding principle uh, of, of the story. So um, noun-based preparation for searches, you're dealing a lot with skill checks probably, you're dealing a lot with um, people strategizing about how they're going to do things, but it can be really useful when the players um, come up with something that's possible, that's plausible, uh, to assist them on the way by saying either yes and, or no however, no but. Uh, this other thing that you can drop in. This is why it's so great to have clues that can be uh, malleable, that can be dropped in in any number of different ways. I wasn't quite sure what the clues were going to be that were going to lead them to Lenora, but as they made these skill checks, as they were more and more successful, uh, it became more and more apparent uh, how to kind of light the way for them to uh, at least have a really good chance of succeeding in this adventure. So there you go.